We're back at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire for the second string of the Women's Pro Series Playoffs semifinal round. As you recall from the previous segment, we've got two matches, Celeste Buckmore versus Judy Bowden and Lois Queen versus Kim Pelletier. In this match, Celeste Buckmore uh, had a 117 game in the first string and Judy Bowden won 12. After Judy got off to a fast start, Celeste came back with some marks at the end. And as you saw right there, Celeste started off with a spare while Judy had a nine box. So Celeste is, is leading by six right now, plus the spare fill. And she adds six. So it's now a 12 pin lead for Celeste through one box of the second string. The winner of this match will, oh, a nice bid by Judy Bowden for the spare, doesn't go. The winner of this match will face the winner of the match between Kim Pelletier and Lois Queen. And that'll be a two string match for the, uh, for the championship in this Women's Pro Series Playoffs Tournament. Each bowler recording a nine in the second box. And there's a strike by Judy Bowden in the third. Having a look at it in slow motion. Nice one-two pocket hit, pretty solid. The five pin is the last one to go. Celeste Buckmore with an answer. Great shot for a spare. She had a three drop, but look how she bounces back to convert it. Comes in on the one-two pocket. The head pin goes to the side wall to take out the ten. And I'm not sure what it was that came off the wall to get the five, but it's a great shot for a spare by Celeste in the third box. And there's another strike by Judy Bowden. That's a double, and that's going to... Well, let's take a look at it. Another one-two pocket hit. That one really went down quickly. That's going to give Judy a chance to take the lead. Celeste Buckmore put six on the spare. She has 41 through third. And with the double, Judy Bowden has 38 through three plus a ball because she still has one ball remaining on that first strike. Looking for three in a row, and she doesn't get it, but she does drop six, and that gives her 44 through three, and a three-pin lead in this string, which means that she's still down by two in completed frames. But having had the uh, strike, and she puts eight on that strike, she will take the lead. And there's a spare by Celeste Buckmore in the fifth. So this looks like it's, it's going to be a seesaw match going right down to the end. You can see through five, Judy Bowden leads by seven, but Celeste still has a spare up in the fifth. So it's essentially a tie game. Now Kim Pelletier and Lois Queen will come up again. Lois is leading by... 14 pins after the first string. <clears throat> she had 116 to 102 for Kim Pelletier. Lois trying to convert that 410, trying to use the piece of wood, but it wasn't really very useful. So both bowlers will be open. Lois has a 9 in the first box. Kim will be trying to get out of this split with as many as she can and it'll be a seven box so that gives Lois Queen of a lead of uh, 16 pins 14 coming in plus the two there's a half Worcester for Lois Kim Pelletier with a nice ball that looked like a strike but the eight pin is still standing some wood out front that should go and it does 
So that'll give Kim a chance to cut the lead. And Lois with a six. So Kim has already cut the lead by four. And she's got the spare to work on. Lois Queen with a nice ball there. She uh, drops eight in the fourth, leaving, or in the third, leaving a uh, six ten. Uh, Kim knew that she had missed that when she stamped her foot, a little frustrated, but uh, that still cuts the lead by seven because she was up against that six box. So through two, it's a nine pin lead for Lois Queen. And Lois and Kim will both be open again in the third. Lois Queen with a nine. As I mentioned, both of these bowlers are members of the once a month Sunday Pro League. Lois with a 1-3 pocket hit. She drops 8, leaving a 4-5 split with a piece of wood that might be she might be able to use that to sweep and she just catches it but it goes she barely clipped the edge of that wood and you can see i think she may have gone a little bit further right than she wanted to just there are actually two pieces of wood there she caught the one on the right but uh that kicked the five pin over into the four so that's a spare in the fourth meanwhile kim pelletier looking at three and six with some wood and that was a tricky piece of wood, it turned out. It, it was just at the wrong angle. To It, it really kind of protected the six pin. Uh, she takes a ten box in the fourth. And the fifth, Lois Queen drops seven. That gives her a sixteen pin lead once again. Kim Pelletier with an 8 drop. And is that, now that's a great shot right there by Lois Queen. 6, 7, and 9. And you can see right here that this is a perfect shot. She goes to the right side of the 6 pin, kicks it into the 9, and then it goes over and gets the 7. And you can see her demonstrative reaction there. She knows that's a terrific shot. And Kim misses the 6-10, so she will be open in the 5th, still looking at 6-10. And she converts it for a 10, so through uh, 5 boxes in this match, Lois Queen leads Kim Pelletier by 16 pins, plus the spare that she'll be able to fill once she gets back up. <clears throat> so now Celeste Buckmore is down by, by 7 against... Judy Bowden, and she has that spare fill, which, and she adds seven, so right now it's a tie game. And look at that ball by Judy Bowden, that's a strike. This is how a veteran responds to a challenge. Her opponent ties the match, and Judy just drops a strike. Pretty light hit in the 1-3 pocket, but uh, lots of action off the wall, and that two ping goes. So that is the third strike that Judy has had in this string. And tough split there by for uh, Celeste Buckmore. She has the 3, 7, and 10. Wasn't able to make it for a spare. Uh, she'll get two of the three pins, and that'll be a nine box in the sixth. So that gives Judy Bowden a one pin lead plus the strike fill. She adds five more on the first ball. She'll have still have the second ball, that strike fill. So she leads by six plus whatever she gets on this second ball. And there's a nice try by Celeste Buckmore, but uh, that was a very difficult split. So Judy Bowden with a six fill on the strike. She leads 88 to 76 in this string. But she was down by five coming in, so it's a seven pin lead. And actually now it's a six pin lead because she just lost a pin there. With three boxes to go, as you see on the screen, Judy leads by six.
Well, there is a 7 drop by Celeste. Makeable spare leave. And th actually, one more drop, so that's an 8 drop. She's got 3 and 6. Actually, it might be. I think the 9 pin might be up there as well. Yeah, she's got it. That's a spare in the 8th, and a very timely one. Judy with a, a nice try, but that was a really tough split. 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Piece of wood in front of the 5 and 6, but she wasn't able to get anything to go to the left. And that'll be an 8 box. So, Celeste Buckmore has a spare fill here. She's down by 4, but she adds 8 on the spare, so she now leads by 4 with 2 boxes to go. And there is another strike by Judy Bowden. Once again, she has the answer. Very solid one three pocket hit. So she's looking at uh, possibly taking lead again, depending on what Celeste can do with this split 710 and some wood. Wow. And that just didn't react at all. Let's take another look at this. There's a couple pieces of wood plus the one in the gutter. And that's really about, well, it's about where I would have played it anyway. I don't know what else you could do with that. And it, it looked like a pretty good shot, but nothing happened with the wood. It just came, uh, wood came out of the gutter and, and uh, through the middle, and 7 and 10 still stood. So, so Judy Bowden now trails by three pins, but she has that strike fill in the ninth so she can take a lead. And that's not a great, a little bit of a pitch out by Celeste Buckmore, but she got a break. She leaves the one, three, six, and a little bit of wood behind the head pin. So that's a very makeable spare. And it's, at this point, it's mandatory because uh, Judy Bowden takes the lead there. And Celeste with the spare, and she had to have that. She had to have it, and, and she did. So... And that almost caused an interesting situation because a piece of wood went across from the spare but the, by Celeste Buckmore and went over onto the, the next lane, but it didn't come into play there. It just got stuck in the gutter, and Tim Lipke goes down to remove it. So that would have required a ruling, but uh, as it turns out, no harm, no foul. So Judy will try and make this spare in the tenth. And she does, and that's an important one because <clears throat> that gives Judy a seven pin lead. And there is a strike on, on the spare by Celeste. But even with the strike, Judy just needs three to tie, four to win. And there's a strike by Judy Bowden. Wow, terrific finish. She had five strikes in this second string. And Judy Bowden wins this match by 7 pins, 256 to 249. Great bowling by Judy and Celeste. Really terrific match. And Judy will move on to the finals here, where she will be facing the winner of this match, which will be either Kim Pelletier or Lois Queen. And at this point, Lois Queen has a fairly substantial lead. But as you know, Kim is pretty capable of throwing a lot of marks as she did in that 148 game that she threw at Lynn Thompson in the earlier round to arrive at the semifinals. So this match is certainly not over. Kim with a 9 in the 6th box and Lois is also going to be open. She has an 8 so she leads by 21. Leads by seven in this string plus the 14 that she had coming in. So it's 21 pin lead with four boxes to go. That means Kim needs at least three. She probably needs four marks at this point. And that's a good start. She's got a nine drop. <clears throat> Leaves the eight pin. Tricky piece of wood out in front of it though. Lois also with a nine drop. She has a five pin and some wood that looks much more favorable. And yeah, that, that was the problem there. Kim had to go really, really high on that, that wood. Otherwise, it was just not going to go back and get the eight. And Lois converts that spare. 
Kim with the 10. So it's still going to be a 21 pin lead. And Lois will also have that spare fill. There's a strike by Kim Pellet here. That's uh, right on time. Because with the spare fill, Lois has Lois Queen has a 27 pin lead with only three boxes to go. <clears throat> Going after the four horsemen right. She misses to the right. So she'll be looking for an out here in the eighth. And it'll be a nine. That gives Lois Queen 90, uh, 90 even through eight. Kim Pelletier working on this strike. She needs a big fill. A little bit to the left of the head pin. She got dropped. Five, I think. Maybe four. A little hard to see on my screen. In any case, it's going to be an eight fill on the strike for Kim Pelletier. She has 86 through the eighth. Plus the 14, it's still an 18 pin lead for Lois Queen. And Lois loses a pin, but still has a 17 pin lead with one box to go. Meaning that Kim probably needs a double strike right here. Nice. Not going to be a double. So looks like Lois Queen will move on to the finals against Judy Bowden. Ah, there's a spare. She sneaks past that piece of wood. Kim Pelletier finishes with a 10 for 106. That gives her 208 for the two strings. So she will bow out at this point, but uh, still a pretty good run, making it to the semifinals of this tournament against the strongest field in women's canopy bowling is uh, and there is a strike to finish by Lois Queen. And with that, Lois closes out a 235 to 208 win over Kim Pelletier in the semifinals. And now let's take a look at the scoreboard as a whole for both of these matches. And you can see that uh, really close match between Celeste Buckmore and Judy Bowden. Judy won it with that outstanding finish, 40 pins in the last two. Strike, spare, strike. And that was, uh, you can see she had five strikes in that last string. And meanwhile, Lois Queen defeating Kim Pelletier to move into the finals against Judy.